Hello, welcome back. As we continue our previews into season 2020, the AHG football writer Jake Nile joining us again. Uh, a team that you've had a bit to do with so far this off-season or pre-season because of, uh, yeah, well, just delving into the question everyone wants to know. What does Ken Hinckley need to do at Port Adelaide to keep his job? Well, it's very clear. The, the, he effectively said this last year, Hinckley, when he revealed that he had a, a trigger clause in his contract, Tony, that he would not get his 2021 contract if they didn't make the finals. And I spoke to David Koch about this, and David Koch was, couldn't have been more clear, basically, to keep his job, they have to make finals. So they've been just outside for two years. He's, he's coming into the last year. If they don't make the finals, Koch has said, that's it. And look, at least everyone knows where they stand. I mean, that's, you wouldn't get this at some other clubs, but that's David Koch. He's, he's a very forthright president and forthright media performer, Tony, as we both know. Yeah, and of course, uh, well, second only to Carl Stefanovic. If Carl Stefanovic was to be president of a football club, which club would it be? Well, we'd say Collingwood, but of course there's only one person who'll ever be president there. So <laughs> so, so I, I'll, say, I'll say the Swans, actually. Oh, okay. Take us back to the razzle-dazzle era of Jeffrey yeah. Edelston and co. All right, let's talk serious for a moment, because Port Adelaide, it is serious for them. They live in a town who uh, expect the very best from them. Their supporters expect the best because they were so dominant in the sandfall. Oh, look, they've, they've got a lot of work to do to, uh, t to make that jump from just outside of the eight into the eight and Ken to get his contract. Uh, they've got some exceptional young talent. I mean, I think if you look at uh, Connor Rosie last year came in and, and, and not only did he come in, obviously, uh, Zach Butters and Xavier Dersma, three players in particular, they all look long-term, very good players. Rosie looks like a star of the competition. And it was a salutary lesson, Tony, because they'd brought in all these experienced players, Jack Watts, uh, Stephen Motlop, uh, Tom Rockcliffe. They brought in all of those players and a, quite a few others the previous year, and it did not work. It backfired. Those players had a relatively uh, minimal impact on performance. Would you say disastrous? Oh, Bordering say, on it? Well, it wasn't great. I wouldn't say, I think disastrous, you know, is... is is maybe if they gave up more for them in the draft, you would say it was disastrous. But they kept their draft picks, so it wasn't disa that stopped it from being a total disaster. But having said that, they've learned their lesson, Port. Get the young talent first and develop the young talent. And I think that put them in a much better position to go forward as a club for the next three or four years. All right, let's have a look at the ins and the outs. Uh, how have they fared in terms of the ins and outs? Well, it's, it's more notable for what they got out in mature players because they let Paddy Ryder go. That was a big call. That means they didn't see him as their first ruck. Dougal Howard, who a lot of clubs seem to think had talent and were interested in. He went to St Kilda as a trade. They got a good deal for him. Uh, Billy Frampton went across town to the Crows. And Sam Gray, who I think was just squeezed out for really for numbers. He's a depth chart player for the Swans. And they brought in really only Wiley Buzzer from the Cats as a depth toll player. It might be a difficult question, this one, to ask, uh, or at least to answer, but uh, Port Adelaide for a long time was a team with an aura. Mm. Have they lost that aura, do you think? Well, I, I, think, I, think, I think aura is a, a, a very temporary anyway. I mean, mm. we would have said uh, that Geelong had no aura, then they developed one. Now, do they have an aura at the moment? It's hard to tell. I think the Swans had an aura for being a team that got the best out of themselves, but as their list has ebbed, that aura doesn't seem to mean so much. So I don't, I don't really buy into the idea that there's an aura. It's just how good you are. All right, then. Let's uh, look into your crystal ball. It's been fascinating so far when you've done this. Who's the big improve? Or, I'll, I'll ask you that in a moment. But who's the one that needs to lift? Who's the one under pressure? Oh, I think it's actually Ollie Wines. Um, he, he's been demoted as the captain. I think that would have hurt. Port had a culture that said that they, that they listened. David Koch told me the fans wanted a single captain in the 100th. 150th season. Um, he's had a shoulder injury. He injured the shoulder, remember, last year in a water skiing accident the year before. Um, he hasn't really lived up to the sort of price tag or the capabilities that he can, albeit he's had injuries. So I'd say he's the player under the pump. He and Jack Viney are great mates. They'd be sitting down for a long session of woe is me, wouldn't they? They would indeed, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about the, uh, the big improver? Um, I've got Zach Butters. I think he, he's shown a lot of promise, but he's got a, a lot of untapped potential. He could, he could really emerge as an exceptionally good player this year. All right, so where do they finish? I've got them, this is a bit of a squib, I'm squibbing this one a little bit. I've got them seven to 10. I think if they're gonna make the eight, it's gonna be right on the end. And if they don't make it, they're gonna be right out. Their band is actually quite narrow as opposed to some other clubs. I won't name one. Initials Melbourne, that could go anywhere. Port's got a very narrow band. Okay, has Melbourne got an aura? 
maybe not the right kind. <laughs> exactly. All right, for all that and more, uh, in terms of our previews, just log on to Nine now. You can catch them all there with Jake Nile, Matthew Lloyd, and also Nathan Brown. And, of course, for all your updated footy news, log on to www.os.com.au. See you soon.